Spot looks like he's gonna be the main villain for Across the Spider-Verse Part 1, but who is he? Let's find out. What's up my comic comrades, today we break down the origin of Spot, the main antagonist for the Across the Spider-Verse film. He's kind of a C-list Spider-Man villain, but he's been around for over two decades, so let's find out what makes him an interesting bad. Okay, the Spider-Man villain Spot first appeared in Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man 98 in January of 1985. In the issue, we learn the man that would become the Spot is Dr. Jonathan Owen. He's a former MIT scientist who is now currently working for the Kingpin. He was hired by Kingpin to replicate the radiation levels of the hero Cloak, as in Cloak and Dagger, to find a way to artificially mimic Cloak's abilities. In Spectacular Spider-Man 98, when Owen shows Kingpin the analyzer duplicator he's working on to mimic Cloak's abilities, Kingpin responds, is there any chance you might be able to do the same with Dagger's powers? For her body and soul restoring light power is the key to restoring my wife Vanessa. The doctor responds, I'm sorry Kingpin, but no, our device has never got a clear enough read on Dagger to analyze her. At first, the energy level was too low to register. Then when she gained the answer's energy, she drove the gauge beyond their capabilities. All but blew them out. Kingpin responds, very well then, carry on. So that's exactly Dr. Own continues to work on mimicking Cloak's powers late into the night, saying that now that the rest of the technicians have gone home for the night, I could give him the results he wants. According to these readouts, Cloak was not a human being in the normal sense. He had an entirely different set of radiation frequencies and didn't seem to show much evidence of any normal physical characteristics. I wonder how he got that way. Well, I've been getting closer to reproducing Cloak's energy here in the lab. Maybe this time I could push it all the way. So he does just that, saying to himself, yes, I'm getting it, but the machine is using vast amounts of energy in the process. Don't know how much more it could take before the circuit breaker overrides click on. The duplicator is overheating. I can't guess how many microchips have been vaporized. But there, the radiation is pouring out of the machine. It's forming a tight circle of darkness, almost like the black holes astronomers have discovered in space. As a huge black hole appears in front of him inside the lab, as he continues to say, but this hole doesn't seem to have the huge gravitational properties of a true black hole, which are theorized to be formed by the collapse of an entire star. He then continues to look at it saying, yes, no light seems to escape it. I want wonder what its properties are. He then gets closer saying, wait, now the hole is shimmering quivering. The drain on the power is causing it to diminish. This may be a once in a lifetime opportunity I do not dare waste. As he steps inside of it saying, I only hope it isn't the end of a lifetime opportunity. I'm stepping right into the blackness and my foot isn't coming through the other side. But it's cold, so cold, as he screams in pain with only his hand sticking out now as he gets sucked in. A few pages later we see the doctor wake up saying, where am I? The last thing I recall, I was in the lab. Yes, that's it. I stepped into the black hole. It must have been the entrance to another dimension, a dark dimension. I actually succeeded in duplicating the powers of Cloak. As he begins to smile and we see him floating around with polka dots. He says, no, this isn't an all black dimension. It's polka dotted. He continues to say somehow when the radiation produced by the duplicator began to shimmer, the power shortage altered the wavelengths being broadcast. I was transported to a place of half darkness and half light. I wonder what properties the strange dots possess. He reaches out to grab one saying, more to the point. I wonder if I can ever get home from here. He then says, but wait, over there, that grouping of spots, they look familiar. I do believe I glanced at them when I was first propelled into space just before I passed out. He then moves towards it saying, it's almost like being weightless in space, but if I make swimming motions, I'll be able to gain some control in the direction I drift. He then makes his way back to the hole that looks familiar, and when he comes out the other side, he says, I made it back. But why is the lab so dark? What? The hole I passed through, it's fading, disappearing. There goes any chance to study it. He then finally looks at himself seeing he's polka dots in human form, saying, great heavens, look at me, I'm covered with spots from head to toe. Oh, somehow that cluster of spots I passed through in the other dimension has adhered to me. He then tries to brush them off, but his hand just goes right through one of the holes in his chest as he says, my hand, what happened to my hand? How do you wipe your butt? Do you, do you just poop in another dimension? Then on the last two issues of the panel, we see him back in Kingpin's lab, and the doctor says, if what I think is true, these spots may well give me the power to defeat anyone. But before I reveal my discovery to the Kingpin, it seems only fitting that I test that power. If only one of his enemies presented himself, that would be a fitting test, as we see Spider-Man and Black Cat. This brings us to the next issue, issue 99 of Spectacular Spider-Man, where on the very first page, we see Spot trying out his powers in Kingpin's lab for the first time, saying this is incredible. The spots I acquired on my journey through that other dimension defy all the laws of physics. I can remove them from my body, suspend them in midair, or on any surface and gravity has no effect on them. Even more astonishing, I can step into a spot and emerge instantaneously from any other, no matter how far away it's located. He then grabs one of his spots out of midair saying, after hours of experimentation, I am only now beginning to comprehend the properties they possess. I have to report my findings to Kingpin, but first I should experiment further. It may be that the powers the spots convey should not be shared. Later on in the issue, he finds out that Spider-Man and Black 
black hat are headed towards the building that he's in. So he says to himself, this may give me the perfect opportunity to test these spots out. If my assessment is correct, the Kingpin may just have found his new super agent. Once Spider-Man and Black Cat arrive, the spot decides to test out his powers, tricking Black Cat to go through one. As Spider-Man says, no, she's disappearing, and another hole is materializing. What are they? Is the Kingpin responsible for them? The doctor then comes through one of the holes saying, no, not the Kingpin, but one equally dangerous. I am the spot. Spider-Man says, the spot? Excuse me, as he starts falling over in laughter. Spot then says, I use one of my spots to transport her several blocks away from here, so you and I could face each other alone. But Spider-Man isn't listening. He just says, the spot, while continuing to laugh. Spider-Man then eventually stops laughing and starts to fight the spot, but his fist goes right through his holes, as the spot is throwing holes all around Spider-Man to punch Spider-Man. Eventually, Black Cat makes her way back, but when she does, Spot gets away. Their fight continues in the very next issue, issue 100, and the spot actually proved himself to be a formidable foe for both Spider-Man and Black Cat. But ultimately, the fight ends when Kingpin gets involved, allowing the spot to use one of his spots to get away from Black Cat once again. But there you have it, the origin and first story of the spot. As you can see, he's a really fun character and actually a very formidable character for Spider-Man. We actually got a very familiar origin for Spot when he made his animated appearance in Spider-Man the Animated Series Season 3, Episode 12. They did an awesome job retelling Spot's origin, keeping all the key components like him working as a scientist for the Kingpin and discovering these black holes or spots before ultimately using them to become a supervillain, as well as fight Spider-Man. It's still one of my favorite episodes from the series. As for comic books, Spot would continue to pop up in Spider-Man stories throughout the years and is always fun to see because, again, he's such an interesting, underrated villain. I feel like he's the perfect blend of joke, but also kind of serious. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about his powers and abilities. You see, the spots that he possesses from Spot World allow him to transport people and things to anywhere he wants, by way of another spot passing through Spot World. Owen can also teleport himself or even extend various parts of his own body great distances via the spots. Meaning if one of his spots are far away, he could punch through one that's close to him, and his fist would come out through the other side that's really far away. It's something he does to Spider-Man all the time, and he could move the spots anywhere he wants on his body or put them on any surface he wants. He's also extremely smart being a former MIT scientist, but with that said, that's the origin of Spot, a very underrated Spider-Man villain. But now he's finally getting his due in Across the Spider-Verse, and it looks awesome. In any case, what do you guys think of Spot? Are you excited to see what they do with him on the big screen? Let us know down in the comments. Other than that, we'll see you next time when we talk about all things comics, or in the Spider-Verse.